Hello and welcome back to Jack Knives Reviews. I'm of course your host, Jack Knives, and today I'll be reviewing Oppenheimer. J. Robert Oppenheimer is a socially awkward genius, going from studying physics to consulting with some of the most brilliant minds of his field in the midst of the Second World War. He is tasked with helming a secret project known as the Manhattan Project, which could create a chain reaction leaving the Earth in flames one way or another. Oppenheimer as a figure is a very divisive person. Looking back on what he did caused horror, devastation that essentially haunted him to his dying days. But him as a person is kind of a subject that many people don't ever really talk about. He was a very mysterious man. He was very confusing to get to know. And from what every account said about him in historical records, he was very much a secluded man. So it's interesting that the movie presents it in that way, but also kind of tries to almost make him seem reasonable, but also affirmative in his actions. Throughout the movie, we see a black and white perspective and a color perspective. And I believe that's meant to polarize the differences between how Oppenheimer saw himself and how the world saw him. It's interesting to see that kind of filmmaking. And it's interesting to see how they would tackle a subject as heavy as the creation of the atomic bomb and essentially put it on a way that, I wouldn't say dumbs it down, but makes it palatable for those that don't know anything about biochemistry. Because let's be honest, Atomic fusion and biochemistry and nuclear fission is not something that, you know, you get taught in grade school. It's interesting the way they did it and they bordered the line of explaining it in a way that simultaneously kept you riveted and yet concerned. We obviously know the outcomes of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the effects of World War II and Subsequently, the creation of the atomic bomb's aftermath effects having rippled into the modern day as far as the nuclear arms race. But back then, it was extremely unknown territory. And the movie deals with it in such a heavy way that it feels not real, but it feels like you're being told a story that you want to intervene, but you don't, if that makes any sense. The cast has a uncanny ability to remind you that they're acting and yet present it in such a way that it feels they are the characters. They are these historical figures, especially Killian Murphy. He has the look down. Very famous interview that J. Robert Oppenheimer did where he said the famous now I am become death destroyer of worlds. He has this look about him, this overwhelming internalized clock of reflection and understanding that Killian Murphy somehow is able to perfectly capture. I love Killian Murphy. I think he's one of the most underappreciated actors. I loved him ever since Peaky Blinders and I've loved him in pretty much everything he's done with Christopher Nolan, and I've even loved him in Red Eye, which is not really a great movie, but he did a great job in it. Florence Pugh does a pretty decent job as his later spouse. Robert Downey Jr. plays off of him fairly well. Matt Damon does a great job as well. Each of the cast has kind of just a dynamic chemistry that doesn't feel forced. It feels organic. It feels like these are just real interactions with real people, which is good and a little bad. The reason I say a little bad is because just like real people interacting with them doesn't seem like a big deal. But in historical context, it is a big deal. You have to be able to blur that line without it seeming too obvious and too overblown. The only person I say that they kind of make it seem as though he's a huge deal, weirdly enough, is the interaction with Albert Einstein. Because he's Albert Einstein. Like, yeah, of course. Everyone knows he's a big deal. He's Albert Einstein. By the way, no one ever talks about Tom Conti's performance as Albert Einstein, and I love Tom Conti. I've loved him ever since Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence. But I digress. In typical Christopher Nolan fashion, he does everything he can to not 
overdo CGI. Apparently, he did a real explosion for the film. Obviously, he didn't make an atomic bomb explode, but still, it feels real. It feels like a movie you need to see with a bombastic setting. It feels like a movie designed for cinema, which is all of Nolan's films do, but this one especially felt like you needed to be in the theater for the crescendo of the effects and it was worth the wait and speaking of the wait that's probably the only real downside to the movie this movie is about three and a half hours long which is an arduous task for a lot of filmmakers and it is an arduous task to ask that of the audience but the story does kind of flow in a pretty even way that doesn't feel too forced and of course there are a couple moments here and there that are a little slower than others but that's pretty much to be expected here. The movie isn't necessarily for everyone, but if you understand the historical context and you like historical movies that deal with heavy subjects, and especially war movies, I think you'll really enjoy this one. It's honestly one of Christopher Nolan's best works, and it definitely needs to be seen on the biggest screen you can possibly see. I give Oppenheimer four and a half out of five. Have you seen Oppenheimer? Let me know in the comments down below. As always, I'll see you next time.